Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to my 7th episode of Law and Thal Sicil and Rapruta from the black perspective in this episode we are going to look at the move 8 queen captures f6 by white which arises after the following move order e4 c5 knight to f3 knight to c6 d4 c captures d4 knight captures d4 e5 knight to b5 and after the move a6, when white put this knight on a d6 square with a check, we are going to lop it off and then challenge the white queen with queen f6. Now by far the second most popular choice by the white camp is to capture this queen, which personally I think is an inferior choice. And in most of the cases it is chosen by either inferior player or a person who doesn't know anything about this variation. So by doing this queen trade, white thinks that he is safe and avoid the theory. But the matter of fact is, after the move knight captures f6, not only black has a superior piece development, but white has to be very careful as he has to dodge a lot of bullets in order to achieve the equal position. Black Knight is already hitting on e4, so accordingly, White has two choices. And amongst them, Knight to c3 is a main line. However, there are few games in the database continue with f3, which is in fact a completely inferior version as it allows our thematic break d5, once again renewing the threat. So white response is almost forced. He has to capture on d5. But after knight captures d5, this position is already looking quite superior for the black camp. I don't think so we should look at further. But just for your reference, I like to show you one of my quick win in this line where my low rated 1600 opponent continue with a3, stopping my knight intrusion. But after bishop to f5, I think white is already in a huge mess. Here it doesn't matter whether white continue with c4 or bishop to c4. Let's say in the game white continue with bishop to c4 attacking the knight but he got this root shock knight to d4 as if I'm telling him I have a more potent threat than yours. Well, obviously, after a long thing, white find nothing better than castle on the king side, which allows me to capture on c2 with a tempo. And after rook to a2, here comes the winning move of the game, knight d2 e3, attacking two spots. And even after bishop captures e3 and knight captures e3, the threat remains as it is. And the only logical way to defend both the threat is to play rook to c1. But guess what? After knight captures c4, my opponent, to his horror, find out that just within 16th move of the game, he is a piece down for obviously no reason. So let's start with knight to c3, which is the main line from this position. And again, see yourself with each move, knight to b4, black is creating a threat and white is playing a defensive game starting from ninth move of the game. Isn't that amazing? The threats are very obvious. Number one, there's a fork looming on c2 and the second and the thematic break d5 which I don't think so white can prevail from this position. Well, white has three options and let's see each by turn. The first one, king to d1 is a pretty bad one due to the simple reply, knight to g4. So now we are striking on other side of the board and white king is completely overloaded. So accordingly, the only move in this position is bishop to e3 saving the threat, but that makes life very easy for the black camp as after knight captures e3, pawn captures e3 and the move d6, not only white king is misplaced, 
but white has this horrible pawn at the center of the board and if anybody is playing for the win it is obviously the black camp the second tricky option white can try over here is king to d2 which at first sight looks very strange right because it is blocking his own bishop but white has a point to prove as it completely stop our d5 idea you may wonder why what's wrong with going ahead with d5 well here is the problem white has this nice sequence starting with a3 so if you move the knight then the d5 pawn drops so accordingly black response is force a black has to play d4 but after pawn takes pawn takes white has this lovely move king to e3 saving the important e4 pawn and when black capture on b2 white can simply recapture with bishop and not only this position has equal material but with this two raking bishop i think it is only favorable to the white camp so that is the reason why we should completely avoid d5 move when white play the move king to d2 okay so what to do well here comes the first memory marker guys this is the only variation when white continue with king to d2 we are going to respond with d6 and more or less we are going to prepare d5 at the later stage of the game let me show you a sample line how we can achieve this the most popular choice here for the white cam is to play a3 hitting the knight our knight drop back to c6 and now in order to free up his dark square bishop white has to continue with king to e1 liberating his bishops but we are more than happy as after bishop to e6 as you can see the d5 break is unavoidable for the white camp now i like to show you one of the very interesting game in the database which will give you a clear path how good black position is in this variation at this point white continue with bishop to e3 and yep we can play d5 but i like what black did in this game he continue with knight to e7 so his idea is very obvious when white take the d file with rook to d1 he continue with d5 and his thinking is absolutely spot on as after knight captures d5 knight captures d5 pawn captures d5 rather than bishop captures d5 he want to take the d5 pawn with a knight which also hitting the poor bishop on a e3 square bishop to c1 happen and now every move comes with a tempo rook to c8 attacking the pawn bishop to d3 defending and now comes the second threat f5 planning to play e4 and then grab on c2 so white neutralize this once again with the move f3 and finally black castle on the king side well white figure out that he has to do something on c2 so he defend it with c3 but now black deliver this star move knight to f4 hitting two spots and white really do not want to play bishop to f1 so he thought that okay i can chop it off and give black this double pawn but the matter of fact is this position is quite favorable to the black camp let's see how quickly white position fallen apart king to f2 happen which liberate the h1 rook and accordingly black harass this d1 rook with bishop to b3 rook to e1 happen but i think this is a great inaccuracy by white camp as after rook c to d8 attacking the bishop bishop to b1 and now rook to d2 check confirms black advantage why you may ask i can simply block it with rook right well yes you can but after rook f to d8 
It doesn't matter whether white continue with rook to e1 or bishop to f5. Bishop to c4 is coming on the next move, which confirms the black winning advantage. In the game, white decided to grab the pawn, but that doesn't help as bishop to c4 happens on the board. And after rook takes, rook takes, king to e1, and now rook captures g2. You can see with the naked eye, not only this rook is wonderfully placed on the second rank, but white rook on the h1 is never come in the picture. And after a few moves, black indeed win the game in a star. So it is very obvious that after king to d1 or king to d2, black gate a pleasant winning advantage. So that's why the main line start with bishop to d3, defending the c2 pawn. After this move, more or less, black has three good choices. And amongst them, my recommendation is you should go ahead with the move d5. However, by end of this lecture, Somehow, if you don't like my line, then you are more than welcome to look at other variation which I have covered in the depth, which will also provide you a good alternative to this variation. Well, d5 is a very direct move and white has to take on d5. However, it also contained a nasty trap which happened in few games where white continue with a3 which is a pretty bad move as after the following sequence, d captures e4, hitting the bishop, knight captures e4, but now comes the point as after knight captures d3 check, pawn captures d3, you can see there is a weak pawn sitting on d3 and the only thing we have to avoid here is knight exchange, so after the move knight to d5, White has this permanent loose weakness on d3, which is more than sufficient to exploit in the end game. Okay, so e captures d5 is forced. And after this, here comes the second important memory marker, guys. Whenever 11 e captures d5 happen, do not forget to give this check which gives white this double pawn and then we can continue with bishop to f5 getting one of our pawn back with a very comfortable game. The only critical move in this position is bishop to g5. However, if your opponent continue with other moves such as king to e2 defending on d3, then we can play the move h6 stopping bishop to g5 and as you can see, I have highlighted by the arrows, very simple but effective plan of campaign by black, that is castle on the queen side, and then lop it off this d5 pawn, which gives immense pressure on the d3 square, and sooner or later, black indeed get the d3 pawn, and in fact, the winning advantage. So apart from bishop to g5, if your opponent plays any other moves, then this is the plan of campaign from the black side. However, white indeed has the move bishop to g5, and if your opponent reaches to this position, then definitely he has some knowledge about this variation. Anyways, the plus side is I have done some heavy research in this line, and I like to point out some important novelty which will not only surprise your opponent, but give you enough chance to go for the win, even in such variations. The first move is very obvious, bishop captures d3. If white castle, then we can play bishop to f5, and you can check out my analysis in the PGL. However, the most frequent choice by the white camp is to play rook to d1, attacking the bishop. More often than not, all the games continue with bishop to f5 or bishop to g6, which I think is a reasonable option. But here comes my surprising suggestion, guys, as I am going to propose a very unique move, bishop to b5. <laughs> 
which at first sight looks completely stupid, right? As white can take our bishop and give us a double pawn on the b-file. So for example, a simple line can run like this. Bishop captures f6, pawn captures f6, and now white can decide which direction he can go. Let's look at two options. The first one where white doesn't take our bishop and continue with knight to e4 attacking on f6 square to whom we will defend with king to e7. Again setting up a nice trap and I bet many of your opponent cannot resist this as after the move d6 it looks very obvious that white is going to win a pawn as you can't play the move king to e6 so black has to play king to d8 and now what can be the more natural than knight captures f6 winning a pawn and thinking about a full point well guess what this is exactly black wants as after rook to c8 i think white is in huge trouble well white has to stop black intrusion of the rook so king to d2 is obvious response but here comes the star move which gives black a slight advantage in this position can you guess it well it is this amazing move h5 the point is after the move rook to e1 attacking of a second pawn black has this nice sequence rook to h6 attacking the knight and after knight to e4 and the move f5 not only we can able to remove this knight but after rook captures d6 king to c1 rook captures d1 rook captures d1 and the move king to e7 suddenly black get this wonderful pawn chain at the center of the board and his king is well placed to support it and if you put this in any professional engine it will tell you that black has very good winning chances in this end game last but not least what happens if white decided to capture our bishop well this is where our analysis comes into the picture as after knight captures b5 pawn captures b5 we are already hitting the a2 pawn so white response is force white has to play the move a3 and now we are going to target this weak d5 pawn with king to e7 so first we want to block it and then try to pressurize this d5 pawn with our rook sitting on c5 or to penetrate on the c2 square well in fact there is no game in the database so i just like to show you a sample line how good black position is first white castle on the king side connect his rook and accordingly we are going to grab the c file with rook to c8 and when white try to soften up our pawn chain with f4 we are going to penetrate on the second rank with rook to c2 attacking on b2 so white response is force white has to play rook to f2 but after rook captures f2 king captures f2 and the move king to d6 believe it or not this position is very favorable to the black camp the problem in the white camp is let's say after king to e3 we have this winning plan starting with b4 pressurizing the a3 square so white has to take this pawn but now black reveal his nasty idea namely rook to a4 not only grabbing the pawn back with a pressure on b2 but after the accurate response let's say f captures e5 f captures e5 and the move b5 black has this winning move in this position f5 completely restricting the white king and the same time making this white rook very passive defending on the d5 and on top of everything black has a simple plan to execute namely rook to b4 taking on b5 and then taking on d5 and the net result is black obtain a completely winning end game 
That's it guys with this detailed analysis now you are confident enough to meet the move queen captures f6 Remember when your opponent defend with knight to c3 play this star move knight to b4 attacking on c2 and same time looking at this juicy d5 break and no matter however white regales black get a very comfortable and easy to play game at just ninth move of the game thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and i will meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care